I went to grammar school where I had a spectacularly unsuccessful academic record. So bearing that in mind, I did what all good girls did in the 60s. I took a good secretarial course because it was going to come in useful later. And then I did what all bad girls do in the 60s, and that's I don't remember anymore till I was married with three children. <laughs> Life went on in its own rather boring way. The children got older. I went back to work as a bilingual secretary until two weeks before my 40th birthday, the person I have to be grateful to for the rest of my life sprang into action. My ex-husband, 23 years older than me, ran off with a 63-year-old spinster who looked remarkably like my geography teacher. <laughs> <laughs> However, suddenly working had taken on a new dimension like eating and having a roof over our heads. My first job was as an admin manager with a Ford Iveco Ford dealer group. I think that was the hardest move in my career, was that very first step into management. But then I fell in love with trucks. Started to help out when the salesmen were busy and was finally offered a job in fleet sales. Within six years, I was group fleet director and MD of their Seven Oaks operation. At that point, I was headhunted by the Lex group. Four years into that job, Lex had been approached by one of the world's largest truck manufacturers, Isuzu, to bring the first new truck product into the UK for 30 years. I asked Andy Harrison, who at the time was CEO of Lex, if I could buy the company. He said yes, and my fellow directors and I, together with Isuzu, finalised a JV management buyout. However, the dynamics really changed. I found, actually, myself managing a team of shareholders, which is much more difficult than when I was a corporate boss. Having been an absentee mother to a degree, I was determined not to be an absentee grandmother. Although now, after two years looking after twin granddaughters, be very careful what you wish for. <laughs> I'm considering putting one on eBay, but I can't actually make my mind up which one. <laughs> However, I made the decision to retire, and 18 months ago, I successfully completed the sale of my business back to its rightful parents, Isuzu, of Japan. One of the best things about that was being able to give a minimum five-figure check to everybody who worked for us. So what have I learned about succeeding in a man's world? Well, I think first, don't think you have no experience. Experience is learned in many ways. Look carefully at your attributes and be proud of them. You know, there were so many skills I learned with the children that were absolutely perfect for managing a male team. <laughs> Anger management, time management, negotiation skills, these were all things I learned as a mother. Have confidence in your abilities. Lack of confidence is one of the biggest obstacles for women. If I, if I offer a man promotion, he'll say, great, when do I start? A woman will say, do you think I can really do this? Are you sure? Do I need to go on a training course? The male world doesn't like modesty. It sees it as a sign of weakness. Embrace additional responsibility. Let everybody know you can do it. Make sure they know you are doing it. Don't be quiet. Also, if you're ambitious, tell somebody. Modesty is attractive when you're talking about what you look like. It's a disaster in the business world. Please, please don't try and manage like a man. It's deeply unattractive and will raise the hackles of every man in your team. I promise you, I've moved in my career from mildly flirtatious to maternal to grand maternal and it's worked just fine. However, sometimes it's good to surprise them with a minor male talent. Mine was like a sick pint of real ale in about four and a half seconds and it always went down very well. I always consider the soft issues around any decision. How's this going to affect our customers? How will our people feel about this? You know, male colleagues are normally going gung-ho towards a target and never consider that until they've got a revolution on their hands. And now can I leave you with a ray of hope? Once you get to a certain level, everything changes. In a male-dominated industry, you'll wake up one morning and find you're an icon. You're earning huge respect, doors open to you by magic and you get to talk at amazing events like this. Everybody wants a piece of you. I don't know why it happens, but enjoy it and celebrate it. But don't let the Queen Bee Syndrome get you at that point. This is the time when you can really help your sisters. <laughs>